Welcome back to Turning Hard Times into Good Times. I'm your host, Jay Taylor, and I'm really pleased to have with me once again James Turk of Gold Money, and for the first time, Roy Sabag. He's the co-founder and CEO of a newly traded public company named BitGold. The reason for having both James and, uh, and Roy on together is that their companies have chosen to merge, bringing Gold Money, it's a private company, into BitGold, uh, as I said, a newly uh, traded public company. It trades under the symbol XAU uh, in Canada, and I'm told, uh, Roy was just telling me before we came on the show, uh, that it will be trading as an ADR very shortly, and then uh, probably soon after that, We'll get a New York uh, Stock Exchange listing. BitGold has been trading around $4 in Canadian money and uh, currently 36.6 million shares outstanding. Uh, but when the merger of gold money and, uh, and 18 and a quarter million financing is completed, uh, then uh, there will be something like 54 million shares outstanding. And once the merger takes place, gold money will retain uh, its identity. That's my understanding, anyway, as gold money, but will be a subsidiary of, of BitGold. And uh, Roy will continue to be the CEO of BitGold, and James Turk will join BitGold uh, as a member of the board. Uh, James uh, uh, certainly is no stranger to this show. He has been a guest several times in the past, and, well, he's well-known as a founder of Gold Money, for sure. Uh, that's a company that has several patents for the use of uh, the Internet for gold money transfer payments. Or, uh, and James uh, is a free market gold money advocate, has been a friend of mine for a couple of more decades than I'd like to think of, probably. But... Uh, for a more thorough biography on James, uh, go to the Voice America. Go to my, go to this show's webpage uh, at the Voice America website, and you can read more about him if you're uh, not familiar with him. But I doubt many of you uh, would fall into that category. Roy Sabog uh, is, as I mentioned, the CEO of BitGold, and his name is probably not as familiar. But I'm guessing you're going to be hearing a lot from uh, from Roy in the years to come. Uh, as I mentioned, he is a co-founder along with Josh Crum. Uh, of BitGold. Uh, Roy has been an active investor, a portfolio manager, a very successful one. Uh, throughout his career, he has correctly predicted important investments and economic themes before they materialized, resulting in great uh, in risk-adjusted returns that have significantly outperformed the market indexes. And he is an avid reader, loves science, history, and economics. So thank you. Thank you both, James and Roy, for joining me today. Thanks thank for you. having us, Jay. Uh, I, I would like to really begin by asking you, Roy, uh, to explain to our listeners what services BitGold will provide to its clients and how exactly uh, BitGold will work. Yeah, well, thanks again for having uh, me and James. Um, you know, so BitGold is an online platform uh, that allows people to not only use gold for savings, uh, that's one of the use cases, um, but also to use gold in payments and in transactions. And so anything that you can do with PayPal, uh, you'll be able to do with BitGold. Uh, you can already do a lot today, but by the end of this summer, when we roll out the remaining products uh, that we're going to be uh, rolling out, you'll be able to open, a, open an account, fund that account with any source uh, of funding, whether it's a bank account, a credit or debit card. Um, we, you'll even be able to deposit uh, actual cash through these ATM machines that we've developed. Um, you then have physical allocated, reserved, redeemable, insured gold, uh, gold bullion, COMEX or LBMA bullion. Uh, and then you can actually do the following. You can send the gold to other users for free. You can go into any traditional store, point of sale, or ATM machine and withdraw the gold value or use that gold value in real-world transactions. Or if you're a merchant or a service provider, you can open a BitGold account with a zero balance and you can sell your goods and services and products online or offline and earn gold. So you can process those transactions using existing payment rails like a credit card or uh, a bank direct transfer, um, but you end up earning gold. So the big idea is people can finally peg their labor and services and goods to gold. And for those that are looking to seek access to gold, you know, for the first time or just, uh, you know, learn a little bit more about the volatility of gold, um, they can use that to open accounts, but the real opportunity is to get people 
to use gold in payments and transactions. Okay, so everything will be denominated uh, in the account or in the holding, I guess, uh, in grams of gold, I guess. So, yeah. but, but they'll be transferred, presumably, if a merchant, you're going to use your credit card, for example, uh, that would be then transferred into, uh, the gold will be transferred at, the, at that current gold to dollar price, let's say, uh, for the purchase of merchandise. So, yes, the account's always denominated in weights of gold. We deal with one kilogram bars or 400 ounce LBMA bars, but our platform, Orem, fractionalizes each bar, not by reserving, it's not fractional reserve, it simply fractionalizes an individual bar amongst BitGold users down to as little as 0.01 grams or three cents. Now, the system, what's so special about it is it's integrated today into the traditional payment rails. So if you're a merchant and you want to accept uh, a MasterCard, then the person on the other end is just swiping a MasterCard, no different than mm -hmm. how they would swipe a MasterCard if you were you know, using a, a bank processor like Bank of America or Wells Fargo. But what you would receive in your Bitgold account would be gold grams. Okay. Now, I understand that this, uh, your services are not available for American U.S. residents at, at this time. Is that still true? That is true for the next, I would say, few weeks. You know, we're, we're getting ready to launch in the United States, um, and we're working very hard towards announcing that uh, in the coming weeks. Well, that's, that's exciting. I mean, I, was, I, was, uh, I didn't know that you'd be that near to it. I was my under, uh, understanding that I was probably going to have to change countries before I could, before I could <laughs> use it, but uh, that, that's, uh, that, that's reassuring. Uh, you know, I have to think, though, as an American, about tax treatment, and I don't know if this is something that either – James or Roy would want to would want to touch on, but you know I'm thinking in my own mind. I know how our IRS is very covetous of any profits, any gains you make anywhere. So if I'm owning gold, at, uh, I'm owning gold, and I take that gold, and the gold starts to rise in value. Um, is there going to be some tax issue? Is that or is that something that I, I just need to talk to my accountant about? Yeah, so this is a great point, um, and I'm going to uh, explain it in a few different ways. So let's just look at it mathematically. Um, we have built a technology which, over time, automatically uh, calculates your gains and losses, your delta, um, in your local tax currency. So when you sign up for an account at BitGold, uh, one of the last steps requires you to select a tax currency, and that tax currency can actually be changed later on. It's a very hard thing to do, to build, because what we're doing is we're recording the value of the transaction at each moment that that transaction is occurring, whether wow. you're receiving gold or sending gold, but we're recording it in the notional value of, of your tax currency. And then we're just taking that number and, and saving it. And at the end of the year, you export uh, a CSV or an Excel file, and you add it into your TurboTax or, or H&R Block or whatever you use, your accountant, and it just becomes a line item on your 1099 if you remember, like, the old way you would do it in brokerage firms. So, mm. you know, before brokerage firms became sophisticated and issued 1099s, I mean, I'm young, but I remember having a brokerage account when I had to get, like, you know, I had to literally export it out and add it into TurboTax and all that stuff. So, so that's one thing. Um, on the question of why would someone want to use gold because it's generating gains, um, you know, here's a little brain exercise. You know, there used to be this thing called a risk-free rate of interest. Mm -hmm. And uh, we used to deposit money at banks and earn interest. Yes. And then that interest, which was a delta above the initial deposit, would get taxed. Yes. <laughs> and, and that amount would be, uh, so, you know, you get a 1099, and you take that amount, you'd add it to your adjusted gross income. Mm -hmm. And that would be your revenue. Uh, and so it's the same thing with gold. If you happen to use gold throughout the year and it generates a net gain in your tax currency, well, that delta has to be added. And if you're a merchant and you've got costs against that, then you will uh, add those in and, uh, you know, will adjust your, your net income. If you have received gold uh, as payment without, uh, you know, showing or demonstrating you know, any, any cost against it, then the entirety of that payment, uh, again, it depends if it's a good or a service, and by no means are we giving tax advice, but 
The bottom line is this. If you happen to earn a positive delta, a gain, on using gold, whatever that gain is divided by your gold holdings, whatever rate that is, that's no different than earning interest on gold. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the way I look at it in a world that's denominated in fiat when you're a taxpayer that's paying in fiat. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's a very important point. Like, there's no tax friction in using gold. The only friction that existed was the technological friction, the mm -hmm. ability to do it effectively. And with our platform, you can finally do it effectively. And, oh. you know, Josh and I, before we... Um, Establish Bitcoin. This was one of the last kind of things that we needed to tick off sure. internally, um, and you know, just like deciding, do we want to do this or not? Uh, and so we took Josh's secretary's uh, annual salary, and what we did was we imagined that you know, over a ten-year period, um, we modeled this out. We built a model that she would take her salary every month and basically pay the tax on her salary and then deposit that amount into BitGold, and then spend uh, on the BitGold debit card uh, her basic requirements every month, with the difference, the surplus being her savings. And after about you know, 10, 15, 20, 30 years in the model, obviously we, we know what gold has done, um, you know, you're still about five to ten times better off than if you had done that with fiat. Yeah, even after, if, if you're the most, you know, if you're a good Samaritan citizen, you know, write a check at the end of the year, to the, like, you would still be better off. And that's the power of, of gold's compounding effect against fiat. And, and by the way, that's, that's in U.S. dollars. Uh -huh, I think that's uh -huh. arguably the, the best, the best yeah. fiat out there. The strongest um, one, yeah, at this yeah, moment. Yeah, the strongest yeah. one. If, if you were to repeat that exercise in euros or in Japanese yen or in Indian rupees or in Brazilian reals, be much better. dollars, yeah, you'd be way better off. So yeah. th this idea that, you know, there is a friction in dealing with gold um, – is incorrect. It's no different than when we used to get paid interest. Well, that's that's uh, that's really amazing. So you've got this platform, you've got this uh, technology built into the uh, into your model now, so that you can handle this this issue. Is that yeah. something that's ready? It is it is complete now, ready to go. Yeah, that was a core that was a core feature when we okay. met regulators and we said we want to launch this service. Um, the two things they said to us was. We don't object to the service, but we want to see two things. We want to see bank grade, know your customer, and anti money laundering policies. And, and that means that we do a full physical on you when you sign up, but we do it very quickly. You know, we do it very quickly, and with technology, we're able to do it uh, within minutes. But the second thing they wanted us to do was promote tax compliance. Mm -hmm. And so we said, sure, you know, we're, we're going to do that, and here's how we're going to do it. They All didn't right. want us to create a system where people could. Um, you know, build up gains and, and, and then at the end of the year say, well, I don't know how to report that gain. Bitcoin yeah. doesn't tell me. You know, yeah. So. yeah. Okay. Very good. Well, let's move on. I, I want to get James into the discussion here. James, you know, you've spent a lot of time and energy forming gold money. I don't know how long ago is that you and I first met in New York and you, you were introducing this story of gold money to me. What did you see in BitGold and its management that convinced you a merger was in the best interest of gold money uh, of your shareholders, your, you being probably the largest one, uh, what did you see in BitGold that really convinced you it was in your best interest, and, and not only of the shareholders but of the clients of gold money? Yeah, you know, we're always focusing on what we can do to improve the experience of our customers. And when you're doing a transaction like this, the first thing you look at is the management team of the other company. Sure. And Roy and his team, you know, are, he's assembled a fantastic team in all key areas, but particularly IT. And when you're involved in online commerce, you know, IT is the most important element of it all. Um, and the way we saw it from a gold money shareholder point of view is we're bringing two companies together uh, very complementary to one another with the net result that we view it as a one plus one equals three transaction. And in other words, the sum of the two is greater than the individual parts individually. Uh, so I think that, you know, gold money customers were, will notice um, some significant enhancements in their experience with gold money plus new products and services that are going to be made available as a consequence of bringing the two companies together. Uh, Roy, can you explain how BitGold would derive its income? How is it going to make money? And, uh, you know, I'm thinking in terms of a potential, uh, being a potential shareholder of BitGold. Uh, how, how is it going to make money? Yeah, so 
Bitgold will make money earning small transaction fees on every transaction. When we looked at gold and gold ownership in general, we felt that the storage fee was uh, a potential inhibitor for new, new owners, people that want to have very small deposits. So we, we eat that up. We underwrite that. That's a cost that's borne on the operational entity, um, not the segregated client account. Um, but then we earn a 1% fee uh, essentially when you deposit gold or when you uh, redeem gold from the platform. And that's a fee that's earned within this exchange that we've built where there's counterparties, uh, LBMA, COMEX counterparties that feed bid and asks all the time. And so we always take the best bidder offer. We had a 1% uh, fee and then we uh, distribute that price to the platform. That's the price that you execute uh, a deposit or a redemption in. Mm -hmm. For you merchants, know, uh, we will charge a 2% fee to process invoices and credit cards. So we actually charge you less than uh, what a normal credit card company charges you. It's usually 2.5 or 3% plus 30 cents. Um, and then you're able to actually generate a credit of gold. Okay, so uh, so you will be accepting merchant accounts. And uh, do you have any sense of what size those merchants might be? Are you going to be the? Can they be anybody that applies, or, or and then what? You'll probably have a fairly rigorous uh, process to go through, I suppose. Like like merchant accounts uh, are always subjected to. Yeah. Um, no. So we see this as being, um, you know, we're we're emulating everything that PayPal's done, mm -hmm. uh, and so anyone can become a merchant account. It will require uh, an extra step in terms of. KYC, know your customer, but I don't suspect it'll take uh, more than a few minutes uh, as well. I mean, there'll have to be a, an approval on our side, an underwriting uh, department. But the way we're building it is it's going to look and feel very similar to Stripe um, or, or Shopify or Square. It's just it's a checkout button, and you can install it on your website uh, or on your eBay listing, and the purchaser uh, is essentially able to click on that button. If they have a BitGold account, great. They just sign in and check out. If they don't, they go through an accelerated sign-up, maybe take some five minutes, uh, and then they're able to complete the transaction. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I, I want to touch on something. Why, what's the point of using gold, right? Like, there's a lot, there's a lot of questions there. Well, why would you use gold? For people that understand gold and want exposure to gold, that's a good use case. But what if I told you that there's an economic reason to use gold, even if both sides, the merchant and the purchaser, couldn't care less about owning gold. What if I told you that you could reduce transaction costs by having a payments network backed by gold as opposed to currency? And, and then that's, that cost uh, really scales uh, when you get into FX transactions with different FX spreads or cross-border payments. Uh -huh. And so... I think that's really the crux of, of what, we, what we discovered, Josh and I, when we established this idea for BitGold, was if you could build a settlement system using one thing, gold in this case, mm -hmm. which is very inexpensive to store, mm -hmm. um, and build a you know, sort of a SWIFT system, you now have a scenario where you can move large amounts of value instantly for essentially free, no cost. It doesn't cost us anything to move it. We charge a fee, but it's just a database movement. Mm -hmm. the metal itself is always staying in the vault. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, if you look at, say, a scenario where you have a grocery store owner in Japan and they're buying a monthly shipment of tomatoes from a farmer uh, in India, uh, right now the way that they're doing that transaction is the Japanese grocer has to remit Japanese yen through a USD cross, because that's the most liquid one, JPY USD. That's going through some Japanese bank. It goes to the Indian bank, which receives it in USD. The Indian bank converts it from USD to Indian rupee. And then the Indian guy can now pay his workers and continue the next month. That whole process would take both sides three days, uh, and it would likely cost them, if they're really, really, um, you know, high volume, then it's probably a 2 to 3% thing. But mm -hmm. it could be as high as 5 to 9%, mm -hmm. depending on, on what they're using. And let's just say, for argument's sake, it was even 1% or 2%. If they both use gold as, as kind of the intermediary ledger, so on our platform, what they'd have is they'd have uh, gold in the middle. One guy would be depositing Japanese yen, 
and then the gold would be converted. So the Japanese yen would be converted to gold, converted back to Indian rupee. Mm -hmm. That transaction would cost each side 1%. Mm -hmm. And the wow. volatility of gold in those respective currencies, say they just did an instant transaction, we can settle trades instantly. Mm -hmm. So if they, if they did that, the second we received the Japanese yen, we would convert it into gold mm -hmm. and then subsequently convert it into uh, rupees. And that whole transaction would cost, we would earn 2% as a company, but it would cost each side 1% and there'd be no counterparty risk. The, the, that's, that's really the power yeah. of this idea. Like, and you, you, you will only, people will only understand that if they understand the volatility of gold over short durations, which is basically non-existent. All right. Well, there's, there's so much more to talk about, and, and we only have three minutes left, my engineer is telling me. So, James, I want to ask you, we've hardly heard from you. There was a critic out there, um, actually a competitor of gold money, that was trying to mention all kinds of reasons why you might better take your money away from gold money and put it into his shop. But one of the things he mentioned that did make some sense to me on, on the surface was Gresham's Law. The, the notion that bad money chases good money out of circulation. Why would I want to take my my good money, gold, and use it to pay uh, for transactions when I can take my cheap fiat money, my worthless stuff, and pay for those same transactions? I think, actually, Roy answered it in part with the example <laughs> yeah, he gave I, us. Yeah, I basically just disputed that with one use case. I mean, yeah, exactly. So, but, but, James, I know you've, you've given a lot of thought to Gresham's Law. You've written about it, talked about it in the past, the reason... Uh, you know the reason you want to own gold, but I. But do you have any comments on, on that? Yeah, I think Roy explained it uh, beautifully. <laughs> it basically comes down to efficiency and, and lower costs. Uh, you know, merchants don't really care about Gresham's law; they just care about saving money and doing things quickly and and safely. And gold offers that opportunity. So I think the interesting thing, Jay, is that the technology that is available today could reverse Gresham's law. In other words. Good money drives out bad because good money, when it's circulating as digital gold currency, is much cheaper, much safer, uh, and much more convenient than dealing in any old fiat currencies. Gresham's Law is something that was coined in like the, you know, I think 18, 1850s or something before. You know, 1480s. Copper, <laughs> yeah, well, that, that was Thomas Gresham, I think. Yeah, he was, but I think it was the other guy that, uh, that, that named a lot. Either way, this, this, this was before the internet, before copper wires, before, like, you know, it's very important to, to have an imagination and expand the category. And, you All know, right. I, I think, you know, praise by name, criticized by, by category. Like, we, we don't really care what these competitors are saying. At this moment, we're sitting on more capital than, than any competitor. We have a, almost a $200 million market cap. We're backed by some of the world's wealthiest families and wealthiest investors. When, by the end of this summer, when we roll out, you know, and, and, and it's very important for you to understand, gold money is separate from Bitgold. Bitgold is a payments company. Think of it like a... Okay, I, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Roy, but uh, my engineer is telling me that we have to take a break now. But what I'd like to do when we come back is pick up on this discussion of the separation of gold money from Bitgold as well as uh, explore the topics of security for those who use BitGold and gold money. And also to ask you, Roy, a question that uh, I, I missed asking you earlier, and that uh, is what was it in gold money that caused you to seek to merge BitGold with gold money? So uh, we'll be right back after the break. Welcome to an extended edition of Turning Hard Times into Good Times, uh, the discussion that we've had with James Turk of Gold Money and Roy Sabog of BitGold. We simply ran out of time on this Tuesday, June 16th, uh, before we had a chance to ask Roy and James some very important questions relating to the merger of Gold Money into BitGold and the combined entity and the services that it will be providing. Roy, when we left off, you started to say that gold money and bitgold are separate. You started to say that gold money is a saving system and bitgold is a payment system. So let me understand. I can keep my gold money holding as a savings account, right? And then I can transfer gold from that into my bitgold wallet? Yeah, so actually, no. Um, no. We, there will not be a way... Uh, as is currently envisioned, to move gold from gold money to Bitgold. Oh, okay. There will only be a way to move gold from Bitgold to gold money. And, and the way we see it working is Bitgold is a self-directed version for, for mostly payments and merchants, 
you know, you can own gold through it, but it's not as convenient as gold money. You can't deposit cash. You can only deposit in as gold, redeem gold. It's much more difficult to time the price. Um, you know, if you send a wire to Bitgold, we execute it the second we receive the wire, but it's not the same as funding your account with cash and then proceeding to make a purchase at a specific price. And then obviously uh, gold money also has access to other metals, uh, other noble metals. Um, what gold money is going to get is a lot of a lot of love, a lot of love, a lot of additions, a lot of enhancements. Uh, one of the key enhancements um, will be uh, this debit card. So, you know, gold money users that elect, you don't have to elect. If you would like to have a debit card, you can. And that debit card will allow you to spend um, U.S. dollars, euros, British pounds, from your gold money account. And so now you are in a scenario, you can be in a scenario where you can indirectly load your card through the sale of gold. So you can use gold to fund your card and then you can use that card for purchases. The other enhancements are just going to be a much, much better uh, user interface, uh, much faster, a mobile application, and uh, lower dealing fees. Because of these synergies that we have on the technology side, we can lower the fees uh, and deliver more value to, to users. But there's just going to be a lot, of, a lot of really great technological features like price alerts and like standing orders and limit orders and a, a, an account that lets you buy all four metals with one click. We mm. call it like a, like a noble account. Oh. And so you can, you know, like have you ever looked at the um, volatility or performance of all four noble metals, yeah. uh, it's 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 quite good. Yeah. Um, and so you know, it's 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 got a little bit more juice to it than gold, but it's not as volatile as silver. Um, yeah. And so you've got you know, 25% gold, 25% platinum, 25 palladium, 25% silver. You know, things like that. An active trading platform. You know, people that want to trade very actively uh, will get very very low spreads and have a really great platform. We're going to be launching an institutional desk, uh, servicing. Uh, l large institutions that can hmm. execute orders um, through Bloomberg oh, and Reuters. Just, wow. And so, you know, we, we really believe in gold. Um, and we feel like gold, you know, we, we also have a lot of faith in people that understand gold. You know, I, I would say just back to your earlier remarks, a lot of the comments made by uh, a lot of the people that I, I think are a little threatened, they, they really uh, don't have enough, um, you know, it's almost like they're disrespecting the gold crowd. They, they think they're these Luddites yes. that are going to get scared by some law, you know, from, from the 1700s to the 1800s. Like, there's, there's a lot more here. Um, I, I have found there to be two types of people uh, in the gold space, and I think this is true for Josh as well. There are those that basically recognize there's a, there's a profit opportunity by selling snake oil, by selling fear, selling fear all the time. You know, the world's mm -hmm. going to end, and this is why you got to do this. And it's always the world's going to end, but I've got a solution for you. <laughs> and, and, I, and I happen to have it in my jacket here. Let me just look for it, right? <laughs> and, uh, and that's the one camp. And then there's the other camp, which is generally people in finance that have worked in the trenches of the financial system. And they have this moment of enlightenment where they just realize that everything they've been taught has been incorrect. And, and then there becomes this sense of altruism. We're all usually financial independent at that stage. You know, when it happened to Eric Sprott, he was worth hundreds, hundreds of millions of dollars. Uh, when it happened to James Turk, he was already a wealthy banker. Uh, when it happened to me, I had made, you know, tens of millions of dollars as a hedge fund manager. Like, it happens to us at some point. And then we feel like, no, 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 no. Like, let's cut the BS. Everything we've been taught about money and fiat currencies is incorrect. Gold is the only true form of money. And how are we going to live the rest of our life not only profitizing this, but it broadening access to gold? And I think that's what I saw. That sense of altruism is what, what Josh and I saw in Eric Sprott and James Turk. Um, I think they saw the same thing in us. You know, there was a fellow, I'm not going to mention his name, that introduced us all, who is a very successful and, and a very wealthy individual. I mean, when, when James and I met, we met in this, you know, beautiful room uh, in this, you know, you know, building in Mayfair in London. You know, and as we walked into the room and had this, 
you know, tea and, and, and scrumpets, you know, there was like these old bonds from the 1800s that were <laughs> underwritten by this family, you know, railroad bonds, you know, and the industrial, like, this, like these are families that have been taught over generations that look, there's this kind of stuff here that you're being taught. And then there's there's the truth. There's market truth, and, mm -hmm. and, and the market truth is that gold is money. Mm -hmm. And always make sure you have an allocation to gold. Mm -hmm. Gold is not going to make you rich. It's simply going to help protect you from the debts that make you poor. And and I think that that was that's the kind of feeling. It's 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 felt like this incredible journey. You know, we just set up this business ourselves. We self funded it, and we were able to convince people like this to to buy into this vision. Um, but I, I don't think we should be shortcutting or shorthanding the gold community. I think that they've all lived through these crises, and they've understood this. And 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 now the, what we're offering is, if you want to just still use gold as something that you buy and sell, just like an investment, that's fine. And you can continue to do that just as you have. And and that's great. And you can do that through gold money. And we're going to offer you more services and make it easier for you. But if you actually believe that gold is money, isn't it time to put uh, your money where your mouth is and start using it in transactions? And you know the math. You know that it rises over time. You know that any friction cost or tax is akin to an interest rate that you would earn on a deposit. And so why not start using gold in payments and transactions? And, and that's the use case, by the way, for the uh, wealthy Westerner. I'm going to take a step back and now give you the use case from the perspective of the poor underbanked or unbanked individual who can basically, through his mobile phone, now sell goods and services to people that are, that are themselves injecting fiat. So they're out there collecting this plethora of fiat, and, they, and this one individual uses his knowledge of gold to basically sell his services, his goods, and, and convert fiat into gold, right? So it becomes like a machine. And, and that's the most interesting use case to me. That's what I'm going to pursue for the rest of my yeah. life, is, is getting people that don't even have access to, to something like the U.S. dollar. You know, it's very elitist to yeah. think that everyone has access to a U.S. dollar account or a euro account. Oh, no. There are three, four, five billion people that literally are accustomed to losing 20% of their currency value every year. Yeah. Well, there's a there's a lot of, an awful lot of unbanked Americans too, the people that don't have banking accounts. So I guess yeah, there's in, like thirty or forty million yeah, in, exactly. in the United States alone. Well, Roy, one of the bits of anxiety that some people have, and I, I, probably some of us older guys especially, uh, but the whole notion of having our wallets hacked, that is, our bit gold wallets hacked. It's my understanding is something like on average around. The average size of the holdings or accounts at Gold Money is something like eighty thousand dollars worth. Now, if I were to have that average sized holding at Gold Money, is that whole thing at at risk if my gold wallet were hacked? Help me understand: is there any is there any security risk here? Uh, and if so, can you put it in some kind of perspective for me? Yeah, sure. So it's a great great question. So let's separate Gold Money from Bit Gold because. They're separated. There's no plumbing system between the two. Uh, gold money is totally segregated in terms of, of, of code. There's a term in, in, in coding known as forking. It's a forked system. Um, but so whatever gold money has had so far will continue in terms of security with, with major, major additions on our end. But mm -hmm. let's, let's get back to this concept of, of hacking. Um, and I'm going to make an argument here that, that hopefully will come across the right way. But you can't hack a system with a ledger that's relying on physical vaulted gold. So what a hacker can do is any IT system can be hacked remotely, right? Any, any, anything that requires a username or a password can be hacked. We've learned that. Mm -hmm. But there are two types of hacks. There are hacks where the attacker is getting away with value, right? They actually are able to achieve uh, value loss or, or destruction of value. And there is a hack where the attacker is able to get away with information. And in a closed system, a closed network, whether it's the banking system or whether it's gold money or whether it's bit gold, remember, we're closed systems. Mm -hmm. we, we have an air gap around us, and I'll go into more detail later. The worst that a hacker could do, if they looked over your shoulder and had your username, they can get into your account, start moving around, seeing how much you have, but they couldn't extract any value because 
you're only allowed to withdraw funds or gold in this case. We don't do third party transfers. So, mm -hmm. so it can only go back to your original bank account. Mm. So once you link a bank account, that's it. it can only go back there. And this is true for the banking system as well. I, I've never heard of a hack, you know, a bank, a bank system hack where the attacker got away with value. What they get away with is information, usernames, passwords, identity theft. Now, to that extent, our CTO is Alessandro Promoli. Um, the way that I met Alessandro was I had known uh, of a company called Ripple, which was run by a, a guy named Chris Larson. And I reached out to Ripple and I had um, built a relationship with them and learned a lot about the system they were building. It's a company based in the Silicon Valley. And through that company, I, I was able to meet Alessandro, who was a security consultant to Ripple. And he's a guy that's basically his whole life spent uh, you know, in encryption, data protection, storage, security. He's an ex-hacker. Um, you know, he's basically built the system which encrypts all messages for the Italian Postal Service. Mm. Um, he's worked on encryption for the New York Stock Exchange and the NASDAQ. Uh, he spent his whole life on these things. And he actually found a, a security flaw in Ripple and, and, and then brought it to them and helped them fix it. But he's our chief technology officer. Oh, he's impressive. designed everything. So everything around our network, not only is it a closed network in the sense that nobody can remotely extract value. If, if Jay Taylor has an account at BitGold or at Gold Money, the money, the gold value can only go back to Jay Taylor. Okay, we have flags and and all these algorithms that will check for like, say, say a hacker logged into your account and tried to move gold to someone else and then tried to remove the money. Well, that guy has to ha has to have gone through a full know your customer and anti money laundering mm -hmm. background checks and and we would catch that in two seconds. It's a closed system. And mm -hmm. then beyond that, we're insured. You know, we we are insured. We are a public company. We stand behind everything. We're transparent. We're audited by Price Waterhouse Coopers. We're not um, a fly-by-night operation. You know, we're regulated in Canada. We're regulated in Jersey by the Jersey Financial Service Commission. Um, and we keep everything segregated from our customer holdings. All of our operational capital is segregated. Um, but in terms of actual encryption and, and security, uh, you know, we basically have a closed network. So no one can really penetrate that network and extract any value, and that's that's an important thing to, to understand. Oh, it absolutely is. I think it's I think it's essential. Uh, uh, James, did you have anything to add on that? Yeah, let me just add to that. You know, Gold Money had been operating for 15 years, uh, and we've never had any loss over that 15-year period of mm -hmm. time. So it's basically evidence that if you do your software correct, if you do the security correct. Um, and you meet, you know, um, standards that banks would apply, you know, for uh, security and safety. Uh, you don't have to uh, worry about, you know, some of these uh, security systems. The systems get hacked are the ones that are done poorly. It's not the ones that have met, you know, first-class security standards. And, and, you know, our experience in gold money basically proves that uh, if you do it right, um, a, a system won't be hacked. Well, and uh, I believe, Roy, you, you uh, indicated that you'd probably be even adding some more uh, security measures on top of what Gold Money already has had. So that's, that's reassuring. Yeah, Gold Money has done a, a great job. I mean, by the way, one thing to remember, Gold Money has what's known as an ISAE audit. And, you know, viewers can or, or, or listeners can Google what that is. It's one of the hardest control audits to have. We don't even have it at BitGold. Um, but Gold Money has always conducted itself with the utmost integrity and has never spared any expense with respect to its internal controls. I mean, mm. we were blown away by the level of controls that the organization has. Um, but yeah, we'll be adding things like, you know, fingerprint approval on the mobile app and two-factor authentication um, and the ability to have, you know, text messages anytime anyone uh, logs in or, or, or does a transaction. Um, but ultimately, it's very important to understand, like, it, you know, there's a lot of snake oil when it comes to security, too. Like, ultimately, the, 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 what protects you in online security is low-tech solutions, just having an air gap, just saying, mm -hmm. nope, I'm not wiring any money out unless it's the same account. Uh -huh. Just saying something that simple will prevent any value destruction, okay? And then guarding your, your actual data and making sure it's all in best practices, um, that you, you, you do your best and, and you do whatever... Uh, is, is the highest standard and on both 
company sides, we, we work within those standards. Uh, Roy, I asked uh, James um, a bit ago, I asked him uh, what it was that he saw in BitGold that led him to believe it would be in the best interest of the shareholders of gold money to merge with with your company, with BitGold. Now I want to ask you, perhaps you just gave me part of the answer just now, but what did you see in gold money that really attracted you to gold money? I mean, I think part of it is obvious. Gold money has the gold and the other metals. Uh, they would bring clients with them, presumably, to fit your business model. But but can you talk a little bit to, to what you saw in James Turk's company and, and his management that gave you assurance that it was the best thing uh, for you to do to merge with gold money? Yeah. That's, um, so, you know, originally we, we didn't really believe that the gold money customer was the same demographic as what we were after. Uh-huh. Um, and that wasn't that wasn't really how it started. It really goes back to that story of just recognizing that, um, you know, Mr. Turk and, and Jeff and the rest of the shareholders just really understood gold and, and wanted to do something together. We weren't we both weren't just motivated by money. And mm-hmm. it's a very it's very cliche to say that. But. You can see it. You can see it by the fact that, you know, at, at BitGold's offices, everyone's working till 10 p.m. And, and writing software. And so, you know, what, but, but once I actually progressed and, and, and was able to, to look under the hood, I started to see some other things that um, I feel are, are very, very unique and valuable. There's a very special customer relationship between gold money and its customers. Mm-hmm. Um, customers really, really view their gold money account as a safe haven account. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and they really um, they, they really trust the brand. You know, and that's why the average deposit value just blows out of the water any other competitor. Because people have been with gold money for years. They know that it works. They know that there are assurances of integrity. They know that it's regulated. You know, this idea of something being regulated or not, you know, who else is regulated on that scale? There is, there is no one else that's regulated. And I think that they also realize that ultimately, um, you know, gold money it w- was there first. And, and there's something about that. There's something about being there first and not being, uh, you know, an imitator, uh, but kind of being the original brand and understanding, understanding the, the core concepts of gold. Um, so what we're looking to do is embrace those customer relationships and, and grow those customer relationships and offer them more ways to succeed. That's, that's all we're looking at. And, and do it very carefully and very gently and very respectfully. You know, James and, and Hector Fleming and Mahendra are all joining the BitGold board. We're now a, a co-board. I defer every major decision to James and the family and we work together. It's it's a very fluid process. Like we're not we're not looking to push any buttons. What we're looking to do is just say, hey, do you think the website might need a redesign? Um, do you think we can lower the fees here, and with with our technology save costs? So whatever cost savings we're generating are commensurate with the fee reduction. So we're not reducing the profitability of the enterprise. Um, do you think we can launch a mobile application? Do you think we can launch? an active trading platform. Mm. Should there be a location? Should there be a store? Why shouldn't there be a a branch, a gold money branch in London or in Zurich (laughs) or in New York? Why? Why why does Charles Schwab have branches? Why can't we have gold money branches? I mean, it's not that much money to do. Why not? Uh Why not walk into a gold money branch and learn about gold and open an account and speak to a financial advisor that can, um, you know, walk you through? You know, I, I walked into a uh, you know, a Scott trade uh, office when I was 12 years old and my life changed, mm-hmm. you know, I mm-hmm. mean, th- yeah. those are the kind of things that, that I think, <laughs> you know, th- that's what I mean by having an imagination, building on top of the brand. Yeah, you, you certainly do have that, Roy, there's no question, and, I, and I, I must say both of you have brought smiles to my face today as I listened to uh, some of these concerns that I had. Really amazing. Uh, Roy, I'd like to ask you, you know, both you and James have talked about, uh, have, you know, have sort of compared BitGold, the model, to that of PayPal, which was an extraordinarily successful enterprise. What do you see, how large could this market be for, uh, for BitGold? Let, let me quote some stats of PayPal for you. So PayPal is 160 million users. The average deposit is about um, $64. <laughs> They've got $10 billion in deposits. Now, that $10 billion spins around every year 25 times 
There's a quarter of a trillion dollars of payments volume on PayPal. There's 4 billion transactions a year. It's like 10 million a day. So, so what does that tell you? That tells you now PayPal as a result is able to generate $4 billion a year in operating income. Huh. And, and so the, the increase of the velocity leads to uh, massive exponential returns, internal mm -hmm. rate of returns. Mm -hmm. And now PayPal can't service people as well as we can because we use gold and they use various fiats and they're within this concentric circle system with the Federal Reserve and the commercial banks and first data system and MasterCard and Visa. We have our own system and gold happens to be, you know, better to own than Indian rupees and Brazilian <laughs> reals and Australia. No, like I'm not even talking about because we know that it's money. I'm talking about yes. mathematically over the last I year. understand. You've explained many of these dynamics throughout our discussion today, why uh, the advantages of, of this uh, of this system. And, and, yeah. and that's why we're not focused on profitability. And, yeah. and our investors, I mean, in the last round of fundraising, we basically made a phone call. We made one phone call and we raised $21 million. <laughs> That's that's how that's how quickly we raised the money. I made one phone call to one banker, and and that's the type of energy and track record that we bring. And so, we're going to use that capital to grow this thing as as big as we can. We're going for the jugular. You know, we either scale or we fail, and that's on Bitgold side. Mm -hmm. Gold money is is a separate it's a separate business. It's got a different dynamic, and gold money is what I view as the the bank, the last resort, when there's a financial crisis, when there's a 2008, that's where you know your money's safe. Mm -hmm. That's where you, that's the Rock of Gibraltar, the Rock of Jersey. <laughs> yeah, um, speaking of the, the Rock of Gibraltar, James, maybe you could just tell our listeners uh, exactly where gold money is storing gold. I know it's in, it's in London, it's in Switzerland, it's in Singapore, it's in Hong Kong. Did I miss any places? Yeah, it's uh, Canada uh, okay. as well, um, huh. in Toronto. So it's Toronto, UK, Switzerland, Hong Kong, and Singapore. And, you know, if there's a demand for it, we can always add additional vaults and additional locations in the future. Right. You know, we're very responsive to what our customers require and what our customers ask for. Right. Well, it's, it's an amazing story. Um, I can't wait, Roy, uh, when you start trading down here. I want to take a look at your company. Interestingly enough, uh, you know, I guess you're not focused on profits uh, but profits, uh, it seems to me like they might come, and they might come in a major way. Who knows for sure? But it's, uh, uh, you know, if you if you service, if there's a demand and a need out there, and you meet that demand, and no one else can match it, then what's to stop the profits from coming? I guess you know, and you can, and you can pass along your savings by doing things more efficiently and be even more competitive and stronger. So, beautiful uh, story, I must say. Anything else either of you would like to add uh, before we conclude our discussion today? Yeah, I'd like just to say that. With respect to gold money and gold money customers, um, you know, I'm always going to be accessible. Anyone that wants to directly reach out, learn more, um, just in the same way that James has been. Mm -hmm. uh, and we will always honor the core tenets that uh, were uh, I implemented by, by the Turk family. They're closely uh, overseeing everything. Um, and we're just, you know, very transparent. This, is, this, this move has strengthened gold money. It hasn't weakened it in any way, shape, or form. Well, that's, uh, that's really re very reassuring to me as a, as a long-time uh, gold money holder, that's for sure. And I think uh, I, just, I just think it's an amazing story. I want to thank both of you for spending time with me today and uh, look forward to keeping up to date uh, with your progress, Roy and, and James. Thank you very much, Jay. Thanks a lot for having us.